Good day, it's a happy Thursday and welcome to this week's episode of Strictly Legal on WESN Content Capital. I am your host, Rondel Dono, attorney at law, and once again, I'm happy to bring the law on you. Of course, you can stream us on WESN CC as well as all traditional social media platforms and our podcast at Strictly Legal with Rondel Dono. Uh, this week episode, we are going to speak about a detailed look at title searches and land fraud. Of course, we had a previous episode where we dealt with the legal aspect of land fraud and what to avoid. Of course, this week, we are going to speak about title searches and the importance of those title searches, what is the significance, as well as whether or not it's important, or at least, how do you avoid fraud altogether, right? And without further ado, I must welcome Ms. Shaquilla Daniel, who is currently the Managing Director and Senior Partner at the L. Daniel & Associates LLC. Now, this firm was named 2022 Legal Administrative Firm of the Year, Trinidad and Tobago, by the Central America Prestigious Award. Now, she's a senior legal and title search consultant for legal department, or she was, at the office Actually, she is at the Chief Secretary Office of the Tobago House of Assembly, and she has consulted on numerous past transactions. Lomis Daniel received a formal legal education and training from the University of the West Indies, both Open Campus and St. Augustine Campus. Now, during the span of a 13 years career, she has investigated some 7,000 plus 7,000 plus, you know, <laughs> and um, titles and submitted various reports um, with respect to drafting deeds as well as instruments of title. Uh, Ms. Daniel is a member of the TTALCPO and a part-time property law and legal administrative lecturer for the Esquire Professional Institute. Now, that's a lot of accolades. Um, and let's just welcome uh, Ms. Daniel on set. Good day, Shaquille. Good day. How are you? Thank you so much for having me. I am well. Thank <laughs> you for coming on, on on our set. I mean, as as yourself being a being a social media and a TikTok oh, and um, and also a host <laughs> as well um, of of your own learning um, program. And of course, yes. um, we are open to to inviting everyone on board because at the end of the day, education is important. Most certainly. Most yeah. Certainly. And of course, being an experienced person in title searches as well as land mm -hmm. um, um, transactions and a whole, I think it was fitting uh, for you to be here. Thanks so much for having me. So so let's start with. Um, land on a whole or rather what are the elements rather of when you are purchasing land um, and the need for having title searches right so land transaction or conveyancing transaction is essentially very very important when we're looking at transferring interests or rights in property from one person to the other in order to do so and to make sure that the transaction is legally enforceable it is required that the parties to this transaction uh, would have the capacity to do so a title search guarant well i shouldn't say guarantee but ensures or assists with the uh, assist the attorney at law doing the transaction to confirm that that the party specifically the vendor um, in the transaction uh, has ownership or has the ability to transfer that right properly so that it is of sound and marketable title and so that the um, transaction can be legally binding and successful. So let's look at, um, of course, uh, uh, intended purchaser uh, mm -hmm. is looking at a property. They have engaged an attorney or they've engaged a, 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 a property agent uh, to deal with the purpose of purchasing the land. Uh, now, in terms of the agreement for sale, that's the first step, right, right that you have to enter into. And um, a lot of time you'll see in the agreement, it's, it, it's, a, it's a stipulated clause about having good and marketable title. Mm -hmm. Now, how long, how far back must that title be? So, standard industry practice is 20 years, right? You want to have at least 20 years of good title or to establish root. However, because of the nature of our a registration system of land title in Trinidad Tobago, where we have a dual system of both RPE and old law. Um, sometimes for certain transactions, it may be a sound practice for the attorney to go a little further back than that to make sure that everything in relation to the title is good 
and sound, especially since um, a vendor may, be, may have obtained uh, interest in the land several different ways. They may not have had a conveyance before. It may have been by virtue of probate, so they may have inherited the lands. Um, you want to make sure that everything in relation to the tra that transaction is sound if there were any other parties involved in the transaction before, so that when you are constructing the deed itself or the title, your recitals, uh, and that's where the title search come in, you will rely on what the searches would have shown in relation to the deeds preceding that one and how uh, interest was passed on. And just explain just briefly um, for the layman, of course, what, yeah. what, is, what is meant by the recitals in, in, in a deed? <laughs> <laughs> so recitals, essentially I explain it, it tells the story of how the deed well, the interest has been passed um, year after year or generation after generation. It usually comes the part of the deed where you see whereas. So you start, when you see that whereas, usually in caps, it goes down and it recites the history of the passing of the interest. And of course, this is under the old law system where you have the deeds. Um, these instruments will have recitals reciting how the interest has been passed. I'm happy you mentioned old law and new law, and of course yeah. you were getting to that later on because persons are like, okay, what is old law? What is right. new law? Yes. But, but in terms of finding good and marketable title, is it necessary that a purchaser must do a search? Is, is, that, is that a legal requirement? Um, so strictly legally, no. It's not um, a legal requirement. However, the attorney... Um, doing the transaction certainly should do so. Remember with old law, the certification to the top, right, the attorney at law preparing that document is stating when you have that this deed is prepared by me, right, you are taking the responsibility to make sure that what you have uh, drafted and prepared there to the best of your knowledge is accurate and correct. And so the title search enables you to do that properly. Whereas conversely, if you're looking at uh, instruments registered under the RPA, the Registrar General has that responsibility looking at form and legality of the title itself. It's very different for old law. So in a case like that, um, even though some uh, deeds, they may have a clause that exonerates the attorney, that's something different I wouldn't get into. However, generally, doing the title search assists the attorney with having that confidence um, to certify that what they are putting in this new document is accurate and registered. And let's, let's touch on the old law. Exactly what is the old law with, with respect to land? Right, so old law, common law deeds, uh, essentially is well, unregistered land. So these, um, they are governed by the Conveyancing Act, and these are uh, not the system of land registration under that is not guaranteed, right? As mentioned, all the examples I've been giving you is old law deeds. These deeds, um, they are registered using the certified copies system. You would have the cover page, certain certified copy, and the deed number attached with it. And there's legislation that governs or instructs how the registration should happen. That would be the Registrar General Act stipulates how the um, how you obtain a deed number. So it starts off with the year the deed was registered, and then the names and letters that have certain numbers associated with each letter, the names of the parties, etc. And so this is what we're talking about with old law deeds. Um, they will all be deeds, deeds of conveyance, gift, um, assignment, etc. You go on like that. No, no, there has been a recent case, Laura, that I could recall where, whereby, um, well, I, I don't think it was determined, but in terms of um, someone is suing um, the estate um, or someone who purchased property and, um, and basically it was, it was fraudulently obtained, mm -hmm. right? Because it, it appeared as though there were two owners mm. for the same title. And um, the claimant uh, is claiming that, um, or is claiming that the 
Register General Department should check to make sure that a deed is valid. Right. And then as we know as attorneys or even as, as search clerks or whoever know, knows that in practice, that is not the responsibility of the um, Registrar General Department to check correct. to make sure that the route correct. is correct. They are basically just going through the process of making sure the document is properly um, yes. cited yes. and registering the deed. Yes. Could you expound more on, 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 on that? <laughs> yes, certainly. <laughs> Actually, this morning before coming here, I had a conversation with a former deputy registrar uh, um, reminding me that the responsibility of the Registrar General's department is really to determine and verify certain certification that the um, transaction has been registered. It's not their responsibility to investigate form and legality of what is constructed, right? In fact, if you have to set aside a deed, the attorney who is bringing into question the title registered by another will have to bring that attorney to court to bring the claim and not the Registrar General. In fact, if you look at old law registered deeds, you will see that to the back of it after it's registered, so each page must be stamped registered. And this is all outlined in the Registrar General's Act, right? Um, and then there's a certified page to the back that speaks of um, the Registrar General certifying that it has been registered, right? And that's about it. They do not endorse the deed itself. So that is very different to RPA instruments, and so that's why there are so many specific details required for RPA transactions. If you are subdividing RPO lands, for instance, you are required to have tongue and country approvals for subdivision, and you have to go through a lot more details under the RPO, RPA. Whereas, conversely, under common law, all those things are not required necessarily. The survey plans must be done by a registered surveyor, yes, but you don't need approval for subdivision if you are excising from a larger property, a, a larger parcel, sorry, and um, if that plan is to be attached to the instrument. It's just you that you don't need approval, but in, in terms of residential land, when you're subdividing, or mm -hmm. even if you are conveying from a larger piece to a smaller piece that is subdivided, yes. usually usually um, the Board of Inland Revenue would want to see your survey plan, or at least, or at least your approved survey plan. Right. So yes, the approved survey plan most certainly because you are excising from a larger piece. However, in terms of town and country approval for subdivision itself, that's not a requirement for old law. So you have for RPA, that is the requirement. So not say that you're not supposed to have your survey plan. To show, Of course, you need to have that and show how you are cutting the lands out. But having that town and country approval for subdivision um, is not always necessary for old law. And is it that you need to have town country approval for the purpose of uh, paying some duty on residential prom um, uh, properties? Well, most um, land, that is. Yes, yes, yes. Land, stamp duties, and again, that is a different. Yeah, no. <laughs> As you mentioned that aspect. <laughs> yes, um, certainly. Remember, the purpose of having all of these things is to identify accurately the the identity, location, size, and value of the parcel in question under the transaction. And when you're talking about stamp duties, they are judging the value of that and what is payable, etc. So that is why the specifics for that is required. And sometimes persons try to evade stamp duty Indeed. In many, many creative ways. <laughs> yeah, creative ways. But it is an important feature uh, for your convenience in transaction and adds to the validity and verification of it together. Now, before we get back to the challenges that the OLO, um, that, that exists within the OLO, let's deal in terms of the new law and why, that, why, why do we have a disparity? Or why is it that all properties are not conveyed or transferred to the, to the RP, which is the Real Property um, Act or um, system. Why not? Yeah. Well, so firstly, old law existed first, or uh, that, mm -hmm. right? It was there first. And so many times, you know, you may not be able to help how your lands were first registered under which system. The RPA system is newer. Um, you can bring your lands under the RPA. I think that that was mentioned yeah. at the last um, show that we had. And it, it's always a good practice for a lot of landowners because it helps to guarantee a title and make it stronger. Um, but I think the difficulty with that is the time. Yes. That it takes to, to bring your real land um, into the into the, and the expense. system and the expense. <laughs> yes, because it's an entire process. Yeah. But I mean it, it helps with it prevents fraud 
and this morning we're talking about fraud and land because um, the truth of the matter is our systems, uh, we have notorious instances of land fraud happening in the country. That's a reality. And um, with the old law system, because the checks and balances that are required under the RPA system isn't for old law, it is a lot easier for the occurrences of these things to happen. And where, because you are relying mainly on the recitals of the deeds and these kinds of things, as opposed to having the state guarantee the transaction and having an endorsement as well, um, having all the transactions in one place uh, compared to having to look for them under the old law system. Now could you describe in terms of what what is a detailed investigation mm. of title basically? I, <laughs> yes I would love to do that. <laughs> I would love to do that because over the years I have seen a lot of title search reports and I use quotation because um, a, a good title search ought to tell a comprehensive story of all the registered transaction in relation to land, as well as any encumbrance, and encumbrances are considered mortgages, list pendants, liens, or judgments against the land. I've seen many reports that do not include these things, and this can be very problematic because that affects the title of the property. Additionally, a good title search needs to not just regurgitate registered information, especially for old law. Now, Technically, the responsibility of the interpretation of a report is the responsibility of the attorney. However, especially when you have new attorneys or attorneys who are not very um, experienced in conveyancing, it will be very helpful that the title search that they have will be able to speak a little bit, uh, especially when they're making inferences and the legalities of the deed itself. So, for instance, if you are searching a property and you realize that it was given in joint tenancy at one point and then later on it changes to tenancy. Come on. Listen, I'm so happy you made that <laughs> reference because I am dealing with something just, yes. just like that at the moment. Yes, yes, yes. You know that that is problematic. Now remember when these deeds would have, if they're under the old law and they, they may all be registered. Remember the Register General Department responsibility is not to consider the form. Yeah. <laughs> oh, because <laughs> of the validity of the information. Correct, correct. Legal information. Correct. The yes. legalities Legality, of, yes. the, of that document is the responsibility of the attorney at the top who would have prepared and certified that. So it is very possible to have registered deeds that may not have the requisite legalities following it. So you may have regurgitated the registration of deeds coming down the line and you could say yes. 20 years, everything registered, passing on hand to hand, all is well. However, when you look at one of these documents, you realize that there, were, there was an error at some point, whether that be an error in tenancy, whether the error in reciting the names of the party properly, um, where there may be the clause that um, the had them now my god problems is right um there's an issue there or there is an incorrect um quotation of the schedule of the deed uh, the Even schedule the number. right yeah, yeah. All of these kinds of things. Um, additionally I've seen errors where um, it came from a deed of assent and the uh, the reference for the will number um, in association with letter of administration or the probate of the will is incorrectly cited or not cited at all, or the manner in which the original LPR um, would have had it isn't correctly illustrated and demonstrated. You have so many things that can go wrong inside the deed itself that will not be checked and does not have to be checked by the Registrar General Department. Now, is it, I, I, you mentioned, yes, the responsibility of the attorneys, mm -hmm. but a lot of attorneys engage search clerks. Right. Or title clerks, as we call them. Right. Is it the responsibility of the title clerks to, 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 to go to investigate thoroughly and report as to what it is that was found or whether the title is marketable, whether there is good root, etc.? All right. So that question is a technical one <laughs> because there is no legislation currently, um, and I do have issue with this because I believe that title clerks and many other supporting occupations within the legal 
profession um, are intrinsically important for the execution of transactions and just the business of practicing law. The truth is there are many occupations um, on which attorneys rely in order to have things done. And so if there's no legislation governing the behavior or the responsibility of these professions as with other jurisdictions there are. So for instance, in the US and other areas, paralegals, etc., they have governing legislation that govern how they should act, just as a legal profession act will do for attorneys. So I'm saying all that to say that no, there is no um, official formal responsibility for title clerks right there's no legislation i can quote and state that they should however it is best practice that they should especially if you have a very experienced title clerk um, producing a report for an attorney they should assist with the because it's, it, it is investigation of title is the responsibility of a title clerk and it, to investigate would also mean um, not to interpret but to investigate that the title is sound. Yeah. And, and, and this is, I mean, this is real issues whereby, I mean, attorneys who would engage title, title um, clerks to, to produce reports and yes. all they would get is, is just copies of the registered deeds without, yeah. you know, without stating, okay, what well, is there any issues or are there any issues rather in terms yeah. of whether there's an incorrect um, citation of a previous um, deed number and whether Correct. rectification needs to be done, Correct. whether there's any spendings or, or whatever it is, you yes. know? Yes. And of course, without proper regulation, yes. then the onus falls on the attorney because he is a, the attorney is the one who has been engaged by the client to interpret. Correct. Correct. And so that makes um, everything so much longer to happen. And it also creates so much room for error um, when you have to do all of those things. I, that's why I always say, and you'd have these, our local law firms who have a good pedigree of excellent conveyancing, they are tight to clerks. Uh, Listen, gods, right? Um, they rarely know their work. They would have been doing this for many years and they do proper investigation and interpreti interpreting of title many, many times. Um, as you mentioned there, remember a title, a, a title clerk is supposed to be able to highlight encumbrances or to flag if anything is wrong with title. How are you going to do that if you cannot interpret the law in relation to the document that you're investigating. And that's why I'm saying that a proper search clerk is not one who can confirm if these documents are registered. It's one who can be able to investigate the title and be able to pick up on and explain thoroughly any errors or, um, as you mentioned, inconsistencies in the title itself. And I will always advise that title clerks, sound ones, have formal legal education. And uh, you know, there's availability to do um, your degrees in law and not necessarily yeah. practice, but that assist you in understanding what you are doing far, far better. And this is where DL Daniel and Associates come, come in. in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, because you all are well experienced in, 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 in title searches and it and yes. goes to the fact that um, you know, there, there are other areas of, or the other professionals that mm -hmm. not necessarily are attorneys that yes. have the experience, yes. you know, to, to deal with these areas. I mean, because conveyancing is a, while it is part of, while it's a, an area of law, it is a totally separate and apart area. It's yes. something that you have <laughs> To know, to and yeah. you have to, and you have to know, you have to know the law, yes. right? You have to understand drafting, yes. right? And also the legalities of certain documents. And not yes. everyone, or not every attorney, can be a conveyancing attorney. Correct. You Correct. know, and that's why that's why they have conveyancers as well. Correct. I I was speaking to an experienced conveyancer with twenty two years of practice, and she said, especially in the context of. Trinidad and Tobago, our local jurisdiction, conveyancing is 80% practice. It's it's not it's not something that you could, you know, really learn in law school. Do, Trust yeah? me, in law school, you come out of law school and you get into the world of work and you're confused. Correct, yourself. correct. And the, the reality is so our company is is very interestingly um, set up. So we have the LLC uh, arm of the company and that arm focuses on uh, all the different professions and areas that assist and support conveyancing. So we do have um, certified valuators and um, surveyors and everything under that arm and 
like uh, civil engineers, etc., that these all of these bodies and professions support the transaction of conveyancing documents or title. And, um, the, you know, when you have everything working together as one body, you then eliminate the chances of error as well as fraud to pick up when, you know, something is wrong here. Indeed. And, and it goes back to the issue of what risks, as we said, um, uh, searches can produce, especially under the old law. Mm -hmm. uh, so let's say, for instance, you pick up some, some irregularities. Yes. What's next? Oh, How boy. do you advise a client? All right. So when you pick up irregularities, of course, um, so the client will should be notified uh, to the extent of what is the irregularity or the, or the encumbrance or the difficulty with it. The vendor's attorney has the opportunity now to answer these things or to rectify. As you would have mentioned earlier, many times a deed of rectification is required to fix the error. But sometimes the error is so, um, it, it's so integral to the to the form of the deed that it has to be set aside. So if that is the case, you know, the attorney may have to carry it to be set aside and get a court order asking that it be struck from the records and a new deed be created instead. And, and if, 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 I, if, if I'm not putting you on the spot, what, <laughs> what's, what sort of instances that, that, that can happen where, where, where they have to see the court order um, to, to set aside such deeds. All right, I am trying to remember some real life examples in my head as you <laughs> ask that question. Um, it may be, um, as I mentioned before, issue with tenancy, incorrect tenancy mentioned. I mean, that can be rectified. But I have seen instances where um, there is, for instance, an, a deed of partition being done. And the way in which the lands were separated um, is not consistent with the requirements for doing the transaction properly. And any time um, a transaction that has been registered affects the interest itself of the parties in law, they are, that is the time when the court will decide to okay, set aside the deed in its entirety and create a new one, right? Um, I had a matter where the, again, it was the partitioning of, of a new property and the deed that existed would have given the original owner interest even though it was supposed to be subdivided, was not subdivided properly. So he did not have real title passed on to him and couldn't mortgage or sell or anything like that after. And in such a case, that deed had to be set aside because you cannot um, subdivide and still retain your interest in the entire piece and wow. that's what it did <laughs> this, this this is i mean this and we can go on and on and on because there's so many different um scenarios and i believe um we, we are basically out of time oh uh, and but 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 um for for the for the viewing and listening audience where where are you located we're located at the corner of taylor street and arapita avenue in woodbrook number one and we're just upstairs there you can um and how, do, and how do, do you get in contact with, with you? Sure, so the office number is 241-3772, 241-3772, or you can email us at services at dldaniel.com. That's services at dldaniel.com. Of course, we will put that up on the, on the screen, of course. Yes, yeah. yes. Um, before I leave, I know we're out of time, but I That's want to okay. mention really quickly, in terms of searching, you know, we have the new PBRS system. Yes, <laughs> that was a question I was going to ask, yeah. Yes. Yeah. The, the yes, whole online system, yeah. Good, and a lot of new attorneys, sometimes they would rely on the PBR systems. So, you know, um, we don't need to title clicks anymore. Somebody asked me recently if the profession is becoming obsolete, like, you know, you no longer so. need it. However, you need to remember that the PBRS system, and I am pleased to say that, you know, I would, would have been in consultation with the creation of the same. However, that system relies on what is registered and, and sometimes... What, yeah, I'm not going to say <laughs> what is uploaded as registered and what sometimes title clerks um, give to be uploaded. There are many times where there are deeds that are found that are not there and then a clerk will have to write and say, include this in the system. That's true. And this is because of the fact that the deeds are probably old or, or, or it, it can't be Correct. Um, Remember on. Yes, they may not be in good condition, condition. Yeah. and all of these things. Remember, the, in, with older, you have deeds 
in, from 19, 1887, 1890, these kinds of things. And so not everything is there on the PBR system. And I tell um, persons, not because it's not there means it does not exist. So, you know, having the physical searches done compared to the new PBR system, even though it is a great initiative, it helps a lot. Um, it is forward thinking and I'm grateful that you're adding, we have been adding technology to law. However, at this time, it cannot be guaranteed that everything is uploaded there or and uploaded I, correctly. I think, I think the next discussion will be search clerks who are just using the PBR system to, <laughs> to give you reports, to generate reports. But I think this is a discussion for another time. Okay. Um, time, sorry, Shakila. Thank you so much. Any closing words? I, I know they are telling me, hurry up. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> no, I'm just, I'm just very grateful to have been here today and speaking on something I'm very passionate about. I think I that a law of conveyance is a very important and serious one. It is an art form that I think is dying. Um, <laughs> many young attorneys, um, I mean, persons have been having a negative view of the legal profession due to the amount of fraud happening with yeah. conveyancing. And I want to remind attorneys of their responsibility of making sure um, good and marketable title happen when they are doing transactions and to make sure they obtain professional, formal and definitive assistance in helping manage and uphold their obligation and responsibility and so that we can really eradicate this fraud Indeed. situation in land. Indeed. Shakila Daniel, thank you so much, Managing Director and Senior Partner <laughs> of the L. Daniel and Associates of Woodbrook. Uh, <laughs> so thank you so much. So guys, it's a wrap. You have been watching Strictly Legal on WESN Content Capital. Capital, don't forget to view us and on our replay, as well as Strictly Legal with Rondell Dono. And before I leave, I'll leave you with this quote, never underestimate the power of self, for it's within self that you find strength. God bless. Have a good day. Mm -hmm.